uh, honey pot distraction. Using Negroes and sock puppets for agendas, you know what it is. They're, they're just more products of the system that they're a part of. But, um, you know, they need these, these guys to do stuff like that. So. Yeah, the goal is everybody to be biracial, definitely. They want everybody to be beige and um, into some sort of racial mixture. And it needs to be that. Even though we understand that race itself is a societal construct, the system still uses it as a means to create demographic strife between the different classes. So you know what it is. Um, but people still dictate to the cultural norms that they are uh they adhere to based upon how they raised. So you don't have to be a gangbanger if you grew up in Crenshaw or Slauson or you know whatever, but ten times is the one you were in contact with or know somebody who was or was involved or saw something to do with that. You know what I'm saying? So environment doesn't necessarily dictate behavior, however, it definitely influences behavior. You know what I'm saying? And the biggest environment that's dictated social behavior today is social media itself. So, yeah, so the W, so NBA and these, these things, these are all nowadays just placeholders. These corporations are not into making money anymore. The aspect of them to make money is starting to be phased out. Not all of them. Now, there's a lot more corporations that aren't into that. But like I said, because of the communist ESG, WEF, WHO, CDC, see what I'm saying? All this alphabet shit, um, them type of uh, structures, they want to phase out the individual's ability to facilitate any upward movement through society. And because the country, the United States right now, is being run by a bunch of uh, insane uh, sociopathic communists, Marxists, socialists, transists. See, the trans thing is just the latest thing. Um, they just use the trans thing as a cudgel for the black thing, which is, you know what I'm saying, a cudgel for the woman thing. So the people pushing for diversity and all of that are the same people who created the segregation to destroy it in the first place. Uh, is the race mixing bad? Uh, in a society in which, like, if you think you're black and you think she's white and y'all wanna have babies, that's probably bad because you're going to pass on the colorable behavior to the child and thus the child is then wrapped in the cycle of black and white and oppression and victimhood and all of that stuff that really has nothing to do with reality. They are striving to create a perpetual society in which you and I are perpetual victims. Now that's not to say that we haven't be, be we haven't been victims perpetually, but it doesn't mean that we ourselves are victims. You understand? Like, regards to how bad we believe the things that we're going through is bad, whatever, whatever. Like, we, we were never, we will never know what it's like to be in the type of slavery that these people were in in the 1800s and stuff like that. Excuse me, in the late um, 1700s and all of that, during those prisoners of war being enslaved and having their lands redistributed. Like, we'll never know what that aspect was like. But what I do know is that from that time period now, those people who, who allegedly had less knowledge are actually more, were actually more successful than we are today because they at least own shit. Yeah, I'm looking into that now. Um, uh, live streaming it or something like that. I think that would be a good way to help spread it and generate. I'll let you know. Me and Joey supposed to be talking about that this week. Uh, so that's the real problem with 
with all of that is that essentially it's all rigged and it's all set up to create a perpetual victim class. So that's really the, the main uh, thrust, if you will, of the present paradigm. They, they got to keep things kind of thing because the other thing is that people are not buying it anymore. People are not into mainstream media anymore. They don't trust it. They don't listen to it. They don't, you know what I'm saying? People would rather go on YouTube and watch regular people explain to them what's going on than people who have been on TV for like the past 40 years. So what that says is that the illusion has worn off. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the veil of all of that is gone. Can everybody hear me? Can everybody hear me? Okay, cool. That's not me then, Pam. I think that's your joint. So that's the, the main line, is that there was no public trust in any in any institution that mainstream media or corporations are a part of, because they're all corrupt. You know what I'm saying? Not only are they corrupt, they are now complicit in the social engineering and the, the sexual grooming of children across multi-medium uh, plat platforms. However, this is a heavy pushback at the same time because this is the first time I've ever almost remember since they, like I remember when it was Gay Pride Week, you know what I'm saying, back in the day, and then eventually that shit became like a month. You know what I'm saying? And then they was trying to like extend it for the year. But regardless to the fact, what they have proven themselves is that they are a protected special class. So if they have a special class and rules only apply to them, that's un-American. So ultimately, the way that the system is structured is going to backfire. The only people that are advocating for this crazy radical left trans activism are people that's paid by the corporate left. Well, I should say the Uniparty because the Republicans are just as bad as these niggas. Like, they don't get it twisted. But anybody that the enemy is going after is good because they're against the enemy and it's something that the enemy doesn't like. So it's all basically crashing around in front of them. There really is no war in Ukraine and all that, like that's the way that we think. What we think the war is, is actually a political annexation. It's a skirmish. It's not a real war in the traditional sense of war, the way that theaters in other places that have war are going on. You know what I mean? Um, this operation that they're doing is basically Europe again striving to fight against the tyranny of Nazis, the same Nazis that were that were implemented and put into the Ukraine after the fall of uh, Germany, and basically festered a hotbed of of rat that would go to Ukraine that allowed them to set up the bio labs and continue a lot of the shit that we're doing in the right. It's not conjecture, it's not like, like it's facts. Like we talked about it here before. Only thing is now I'm striving to get to kind of convey the fact that it's not a traditional war in the context of a convention. It's not really that because Technically, Ukraine was annexed back to Russia after the first Crimean thing. So what they're doing now is driving to shut down the rat lines, the money line, the money laundering, the child trafficking, the ritual sex, all of that type of shit. All of that's being run out of it. So that's why it just came up that your boy Biden was taking five million dollars a pop on someone out there from not only Barista, which was the oil head. The oil head was the guys that were funding the, the bio research as a dummy for CIA. So it's all basically a wash. So all of these woke companies, what's happening is that, like I told y'all, the WEF created a communist scheme to get other countries under the guise of, of getting together and going behind human rights. So the human rights hijack came when they decided that they were going to use the gay thing as the cudgel for the transhuman thing.
So it's all basically imploding is really what I'm saying. Yeah, they stay getting downgraded and um, nothing's working the way that they want it to. So that's a good thing for the rest of the world. So that's why they got to do other things to try to implement and jumpstart some sort of beef so they could, you know, keep it going. So that thing that's happening in New York, for instance, let's be talking about that. Yeah, since they've been engaged in this long-term struggle against the inevitable, which is their demise, they're finding that they have to go more and more hardcore uh, totalitarian. So what that's doing is it's creating a backlash and it's splintering the actual movement that they infested as a as a as a glove to be able to to come into these movements in the first place. Like they're not really Democrats. They're not really trans. They're not really gay. They're not really, they're Jews, but they're not even really Jews. Like they, they're the type of, like most of these Jews that came out against Kanye West, the rich and that type of them do, they all refer to themselves as atheists. Like they see themselves as atheists, but they become Jews when they need to flex their, their uh, their agenda to put Lucifer on top, because ultimately that is the God that they're serving. They wouldn't refer to it as Lucifer, but essentially it's the same God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they believe that they are here as our undertakers. This is all in the Talmud. This is not in like the Torah, because the Torah is basically the Bible. And one thing you should understand about being Hebrews is that when what made Yeshua great to most people was the fact that he allowed people who weren't Jews or Hebrews to practice his version of Judaism. Because think about it, at the time that he's coming through, there's no, there's no Christianity. You understand? There's no Christianity at all when, he, when he's coming on the scene. So what he's bringing, he, he's bringing a new version of Judaism or Hebrewism, if we want to be succinct. You know what I'm saying? That's what he's bringing to the game. So he's not even a Christian because he can't be because he is who he's saying he is. I am that I am, right? So when he's gone, then those Gentiles, because it was more Gentiles in positions of, of magnificence after the fall of Israel than it was Hebrews. Because remember, they're cursed now, uh, according to their God, they're cursed because they were doing the idol shit and all that. And they, they killed their Messiah. So they're forbidden from having a nation. What they have to do now is be a nation within nations to be able to keep the, the, the true word going. You understand? Everybody follow. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's where he's at. That's where they're at. So that then puts him, Christ, Yeshua, in a different position than a lot of other, other people who came, let's say, in that type of name before him because essentially what makes him like the dopest to people was that he was the one he, his trinity broke up the unholy trinity that was already practiced from the pre-creation times and all of that what's the whole what was the unholy trinity the unholy trinity was was but Baal, Moloch, and Ishtar, or Astaroth. You know what I'm saying? That was like the one that they kept forming. Like whenever Israel would backslide, like when people would be on heroin and get off drugs 
and then they they like relapse. Well, the is re- the the old pagan drug was hard for them to give that up. So they be quick to burn down gold and make a calf and you know what I'm saying, throw an orgy and shit and go into the old ways. So that was the benefit. So that so so he wasn't with the whole child sacrifice, sacrifice a family member for fame shit and all that type of stuff. They was against that. So when he dies on the cross, or uh, if you read Acts, I think 5.11, it says he was hung from the tree, whatever it was. When he passed form to the essence, his death, when they say he died for everybody's sins, what he's what they're saying is he paid the debt for the human sacrifice. Nobody needed to sacrifice no humans and shit no more because the ultimate sacrifice had been made. You understand? He gave his only begotten son that he may be killed by his own creation, that he may rise above that creation to redeem it. This is why Yahushua is the most hated or, or Yeshua, depending on you know how you say it. Yes, they would be, good question, was Baal Moloch and um, thing a part of what you described as the elder gods. Yes, the 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 uh, Lovecraftian el- depiction of the elder gods would be a good aspect. But even when you read that Lovecraft stuff and you get into that, you will see that these things that he's talking about stuff, like the whole Lovecraft thing came from him talking about the concept of um, alien consciousness consciousness downgrading into this reality and then people being in so awe of that awe stricken of that that they they mistakenly see these things as gods and they really not some of them are so banal and so stupid and so old and so just repugnant that they don't even realize that they're alive they don't even have no they don't even have no physical need to comprehend anything. It's how stupid some of these things are, right? So this movie Oppenheimer is coming out, and what it's showing you is this, is that when we talk about the nuclear explosions and the EMPs and all of that stuff, like a lot of that stuff is real in theory. The only problem is until it actually happens, it's theory. You understand what I'm saying? It's theory and the concept that we were told that a nuclear bomb and nuclear war and this, this, and that happened and all that. But let's say you was to get bombed. Let's say they was to drop a nuclear bomb or something now. After the initial destruction, how do we survive that? Well, the ancient people used to go and take the inside of sheep, they were called. It's called lanum. They would take the lining of the lanolin and they would create clothes and stuff with it. And the lanolin was a natural radiation repellent. Another natural radiation repellent is, uh, or internal repellent, uh, are iodine pills. I would suggest anybody who can still get them, definitely get some just in case. Try some yield, low yield, quote, quote, whatever they can drop. But anyway, that helps. Another thing that got rid of, that gets rid of all radiation is hemp, weed, plant weed. That's what they did in Chernobyl. They planted weed and they planted mushrooms. Mushrooms is a wrap. Once you stick, you could put one mushroom in an irradiated area. And they said within a month, that mushroom would quadruple. You know what I'm saying? And start cleaning the soil and shit immediately. Immediately. So let's say within a year, you get plants back, vegetations back. Shit is actually cleaner. You know what I'm saying? All by planting weed and mushroom. Now, the thing with Oppenheimer, what he's 
famous for is, well, one, he was a devout Sikh on the low. He was a Freemason, but he was also a Sikh. And he worshipped Shiva. And so when they were developing how they were going to eventually establish the, the, the Hadrian Collider, how they are going to reactivate Stargate, they needed to understand the applicable nature of extracting energy out of the ether via explosions. Every explosion, every nuclear explosion, right, is essentially what they what they're saying is nuclear, is basically a huge influx of energy coming in from an outside source. Just like they say, whenever an earthquake or something like that happens, that's one of our peoples from the outer places coming back or coming into the realm. And so, you know, like how you can create, you know how you can go and get that little thing. It's like a, it's like a motion detector. So like when you in your crib, then it make like a chirp. They done rigged the seismometers to go off when everything, when something like that happens. So they got a structure. So what we perceive as earthquake is like something coming within this reality, shaking it up. And then that's like the doorbell, letting them know that something else has come through. Because remember, the earth is stacked on top of each other. Everything on earth is stacked on top of each other. Everything is inside of itself. Yeah, Elijah Muhammad, allegedly. Remember, they stole Elijah Muhammad's briefcase, and then right after that, they started talking about that. Remember, Elijah Muhammad was the one talking about the mother plane. Remember that? Elijah Muhammad was talking about um, the dimensions of the mother plane and the missiles that was able to get shot into the ground and turn into drills and shit. Remember that? What they saying now? What they saying now? It's a mother plane out there, right? It's a mothership out there, right? That's what they're saying now, right? Like Muhammad Ben said that. We've been talking about that. We knew about that. Smoking weed in the park. <laughs> Building with the gods in like 70, 72, 73, 77, 85. All you needed was 120. Yes, it is just like the Russian doll, bro. We keep opening them up and they just keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So Oppenheimer, like I said, which is also an insurance. That's how his family made most of their money, believe it or not. He made more money in insurance than he made off the A-bomb, believe it or not. Anyway, um, so the movie is that. But what I'm showing you this is look at the look at the color. Look at look at the color. Remember, orange is a heavy Freemason color. William of Orange, right? Orange is one of the only English words in the English language that don't rhyme with nothing. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Look at the color. Look at the color scheme. All right? Now look at this. Y'all remember this? Remember this? This is Blade Runner. 2049. What they talking about? So is the life imitating art, or are we just catching up to the script? Maybe it's both. But look, same colors, right? Same colors. Yes, it just so happens they did that, right? How do you say that?
just so happened to be debuting their new game. Diablo. <laughs> right? Same time. So they definitely, you know, doing a thing. They definitely freaking a little fake like virtual situation. Yeah, because this is real life. This is how they've they've merged the reality where people are now seeing themselves inside the actual game. They're in it. We're the two-dimensional characters in the comic book that's that's realizing that the comic book itself, that our existence itself is actually two-dimensional. It's not real. Somebody's reading this. But to somebody, I think it's us. I'm starting to think that as opposed to them putting people in the fake reality, I'm starting to think that the people themselves are the fake reality. That they're putting fake people, fake human beings, or people who believe that they're human. Because every clone think it's the original, right? Don't no clone think it's, it's it's the original. Every don't know clone think it's a clone. A clone think it's a, it's real. Peter, right? Pinocchio wanted to be a real boy, right? So it's the same situation with this crap. Like they are boom. But see, the problem with the stories is none of this shit match up anymore. Because you know there's no there's you know there's no forest fires in, in Canada, right? So this shit that you're saying in New York is not from no forest. Let me tell you, let me ask you this. When the last time you was, somebody was in California, right? No, somebody was in Nevada. Somebody was in, you know, someplace like that, Arizona, talking about how they could smell the, the, the forest fires from LA. <laughs> like when, when, when you heard anything like that, you ever heard somebody do that? Never heard anybody say that. Never. So when you check Alberta, Canada on Google, that shit look pristine. The skies look nice. Everything look cool. So where's this coming from? Well, to me, it off top when I saw it, it, I thought it was something to do with sulfur. It seemed like sulfur. You know what I'm saying? So these things is definitely going down. And like we've been talking about in classes over the years, they've been trying to find ways to deal with it without really letting everybody know that that's what they deal with. That's what's happening. You know? And because they're not talking about, you know, how they use the energy weapons to harness this, a lot of this stuff is going without saying. But this is not something that is a normal occurrence by any means. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's see. So the other side of it was the fact that um, So all, it just all comes to pass. Like, remember, this is from Star Wars. All right? 1977. All right? When Luke is looking out, and he's trying to really get his life together and decide how he's going to get off this rock, save the universe, redeem his father. You know what I'm saying? It's 1977. Right? This is 2023. <laughs> on your left, and then on your right is something that you use and you've been seen every other day. 
just ain't really do the knowledge that, wait a minute, maybe they're trying to tell us something with this crap too. So we just saw Tatooine in 1977. So on your left, we got New York in 2023. And then on your left, we got the visa sign. You know what I'm saying? So this is not like normal. This is a normal currency. So the thing is, this thing always been there. These sons always been there. It's not like they just popped up now. They popping up now because you know where where the veil is lifting. Yes, the nuclear bomb has gone off. And what did I say? Whenever a nuclear bomb goes off, it's a heavy influx of information rushing into this reality that they try to siphon up as much as possible. But yeah, we're, we've been in a double sun reality for a while, but now, like I said, it's becoming cryptically, cryptically honest, uh, obvious that we're moving towards something with this shit, right? Um, Another instance, just the other day. All of these are from the other day. So they can say what they want, whatever, but we are moving into a galaxy far, far away. Nobody talking about it. But us, we've been, but us, I can't say that. We've been talking about, talking about this for over 20 years, so seeing it come to fruition now it's like okay we're catching up to where we're supposed to be at it's our queens those are two orbs this is not the reflection of this bouncing off the camera it's a separate orb but because the sun that sprayed the sulfur or whatever it is they in the thing is making it harder for you to see the red hay, right? Excuse me, the purple haze. But I should say, however, they can't hide it because it is literally on top of us now. Now, what's interesting is there's a book you can get that I just started rereading again. Called The Secret Cipher of the UFO Knots. And the cover of the book is very interesting because it looks exactly like this image. I'm gonna show you in the middle. So your left is the cover of the book. In the middle is what we just seen the other day for more direct. And then I'm um, gonna read for excerpt from the book itself. See that? See this? On top of this, on top of this, this is on top of this. This, this, and also there are clouds in front of this. Do you understand? How are there clouds in front of the sun and behind it? What lie are they going to tell about it now? They killed this dude, by the way. Alan H. Greenfield. This, they killed this dude. It's like, nah, talking too much. The Men in Black legend is perennial that it shows up in connection with UFOs should come up, no surprise, UFOlogy, Bizarro, John Keel, Disneyland of the Gods, that's a good book you can check out, Jadu, etc. UFOs, Operation Trojan Horse, the records of demonology 
are filled with striking parallels. The general descriptions of the vampires themselves are identical to the men in black. The dark skin and angular oriental-like faces were commonly reported. The autobiography of Malcolm X described Malcolm's encounter with an MIB in prison. He had on a dark suit, I remember. I could see him as plainly as I see anyone I look at. He wasn't black and he wasn't white. He was light brown skin and Asiatic cast of countenance and he had oily black hair. It is interesting that the celebrated film Malcolm X chose cho chooses to imply that this figure was Nation of Islam leader Elijah Muhammad, while Elijah Muhammad and his mysterious teacher, Wallace Farr, who also vanished without a trace, had come out of high degree Prince Hall Freemasonry and certainly knew some of the esoteric secrets being Malcolm X is described more in accord with Aleister Crowley's description of the Praetor human intelligence I was than of Elijah Muhammad. In the shadows, the men in black had long lurked, biding their time, waiting here and there now and then. Some people 14 years earlier, the shadow of visitors, blah, blah, blah. But you see what I'm saying? What's funny is I did a whole bit on that in my book, The Dark Book 14, dealing with Malcolm and Iwas and what happened in jail and all that. They start with this research movement part. But yeah, they don't really talk about this book a lot because they get us into shit like that. Exactly. So right here, they, they letting you know. What did they say the aliens look like? Asiatics, right? When we watched the other joint, and he said that the giant cigar-shaped ships landed, and what happened? A bunch of so-called African American looking ma looking males came out the ships with the skin tight black suits and the crazy space weapons, right? And after that, what happened? The war on drugs, the war on black people started, right? Yeah, look at this, man. This happened just two days ago. Okay, so it's that. It's another one. People capturing mad at these drones. Yeah, all of the stuff that they've been telling us is a lie. What they doing to Trump right now is just part of the whole drama. But remember, his name Christ, so they got to crucify him. You understand? That's how they mock him, doing the mock ritual. It don't matter that he against them or not. The fact that they can use him as the usherance helps them with their little fake agenda. The gender don't stop. Cost of who in you. But or I should say, however, like I said, the reality is switching at such an alarming rate that they don't have the ability to keep it going. So you gotta understand it's the first time in history where nobody is listening to mainstream media. This thing that Tucker Carlson went on. From his basement, this nigga from his basement got 65 million people to watch him, bro. You understand? From his basement, you understand? That's 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 more that's more than Super Bowl number. That's more numbers than they got with the Super Bowl, all the bells and whistles and stuff they did. So, 
if you can please send me thirty dollars to ds 18com that would help. She she's keeping track of the the joint. She's like she only got five bits and it's like other people in here, so somebody's not contributing. So again, I'm speaking on behalf of women. But essentially, this is what has happened. They've created this fictitious reality that's now peated out. And now the real one is creeping back in and people freaking out. They don't know what to do with it. Look at this, man. This is, this is crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> and this is all the same sun or whatever you want to say. Then there was a blood moon the other day. Y'all knew, did y'all know that? The blood moon at the same time this is happening. Look, 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 look at this shit, man. <laughs> like they are, we are cracking them in the head. They they can't run nothing. None of these games is working. All of their puppets is being smashed down. Like we we not listening to none of their music no more. You know what I'm saying? Like none of the, nobody wants to be famous like these niggas because we see all of them as broken, crazy ass things. Like, think about that. Like, it's done. The, the whole celebrity, let's all no. Anybody still wanting to be in there with them like that? You already know. You with them people. Imagine, imagine you, you a father, and then your son bring home his girl, and she talking about she a rapper. Imagine that. You'd be like, yo, who you like? Okay, you a rapper, who you like? She'd be like, Scarlet or, <laughs> or Glorilla or, you know? Like, this is what you working with? This is, this, these are your influences? So imagine what your son relationship gonna be like with this person. It's, it's not, it's, you, you already predicted your demise. And they trying to make that normal. They trying to make that type of female the norm now. They don't want hardcore rap dudes no more. They want all the rap guys to be little Nas X's. They want all of the females to be straight, uh, big lottos. And, you know what I'm saying? Parties, like poor rap. Everybody giving Eric Badu all of this power. Like, like what are y'all talking about, man? Have you seen this sister's relationship thing? But because they socialize and they make everything a part of, of the sex, like her sex was so good, but it wasn't that good to keep none of these Negroes. Not one of them? Your box, your box wasn't good enough to keep one of them. But you want to be out here throwing hexes on Blueface? We need a hex on Biden. We need a hex on Larry Fink. We need a hex on um, George Soros. We need a hex on on um, Anasius Cortez or whatever this bitch name is. Like, we need hexes on real people. Like, what are you doing? Chrissy on can handle herself. That bitch got a hard right hook, man. She fine. <laughs> she good, son. She can take a punch. She know how to knock a nigga out. She's good. She don't, you don't gotta worry about her. Anybody get knocked out, it's gonna be him. You dig what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Like, that's what they want. They're trying to create this fake reality because this is the opposite direction. This is what's going in the opposite direction of the reality that they created. Why do you think they want to keep you? Why do you think they made movies like Don't Look Up? Shit like this. Like, they are literally doing, they're telling you. They're trying to convince, they trying to convict this nigga jump on shit that all of the presidents got. They don't, they found documents in this nigga Biden. They found this nigga in his garage next to his Corvette. Under the under the monkey wrench. Like. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? These people done bombed millions, killed millions of people. Obama killed millions of people. They still inviting this nigga to the barbecue and shit like. So that's what I'm trying to say. Like that type of reality and people giving them type of people power anymore is over. These are the symbols. These are the signs to show you it's over. 
Whatever they say they're going to do, let them do it. Let them do it and see what happens. Look what happened. Look at what, look at what, didn't I tell you Disney was cursed? Didn't I say Disney was cursed? Look what happened to Disney now. Now this nigga Namor, this nigga Namor, <laughs> this nigga Namor is raping bitches. He, he raping, what is this bitch? She's a, she's a saxophonist. This nigga is raping Latina saxophonists. These are the people that Disney hiring. These are the people you trying to replace T'Challa with. You see? You see what I'm saying? This is why they losing. This is why they losing. Yes, at Disney. Yes. Yes. You're going to replace T'Challa with Namor. Right? Not even Namor. Not even the real man, masculine Namor. You're going to name him Namor. Right? And... Yeah, this nigga turns out this nigga been raping. This nigga been raping shorties in Latin America. <laughs> this nigga's a Latin American rapist. This nigga. I knew I didn't like him. <laughs> but guess what? He played. Okay, how many of y'all seen Constantine? How many of y'all seen that movie Constantine with. With. Uh, yes. To Enoch, right? Then, then got the nerve to have Enoch name, right? Tenoch Huerta, right? This dude, yeah. First they go at Kang. First they get Kang for trying to beat up the white girl, who may or may not have done it. Now they, now they dealing with this nigga. Now you got a lack. So that's two rapists in the same year. In the same franchise, you got two woman abusers, alleged woman abusers, in the same franchise when they hear each other. Like, that shit crazy. So they curse. It's over. You know what I'm saying? Not only was the movie trash, now you got to deal with all of this. Why? Because of this shit. This shit I'm showing you on your screen. This is the, it's burning all of the illusions away. This is why the sun feels different. This is why white folk just be, the melanoma rate and shit is going crazy. It's crazy out there right now. Crazy. People literally burning up like it's no joke. And it's where everybody, you can't deny it. It's everywhere. Look, look at this. This looked like one two, three. These are like three sons. These are like three, but these three are in, are in front of the big red one. This thing right here, this is this is the sun. This is another planet right here. Or planet. Or celestial body. Whatever it is. That's This is not the, this ain't just the red light gazing off of them. This hole behind them. Yes, it does look like an eye. Yes, it does. Behind me. Look at this. Look. It was like, oh, that's Blue Bean. That's Project Blue Bean. Maybe. Now, if you see Jesus tap dancing in the sky, yeah, that's probably Blue Bean. You know what I'm saying? Look, it's smoldering. It's smoldering. Like Vegeta when he when he building up the Dragon Ball. Because the reality is shifting out. They don't have the ability. So they got to phase into the fiction reality and anchor us to it by trying to get us caught up in a digital bullshit. In a fake war. In a skirmishes. In a money laundering. But this is all about freeing children. Because all of these people are about destroying the children. Having sex and raping the children. That's what they are all trying to do. Look, on Call of Duty the other day, one of the biggest Call of Duty streamers, this dude, all he said was, keep the kids out of it. 
and they tried to ban him off the whole site. So we're gonna eat all of that. We're gonna take like three now. Just take your three and leave my back to you. All he said was leave the children alone. What did they do? Cancel him. So now everybody canceling Call of Duty. See, the ESG thing goes against the basic laws of capitalism. They're trying to make you and I believe that it's evil. Most of the people who are anti-capitalism are extremely paid or extremely broke. Let that sink into you. Most people who are anti-capitalist are extremely paid or extremely broke. They're only anti-capitalism because they don't want the major, major class, which is the majority of people, to have money, to be on a level. So they want to discourage people from actually getting money and being successful by making it a moral issue. It's morally evil to have money. But all of the people telling you this have money. <laughs> right? Fight the power, fight the power. But but these are the same dudes, fight the power, fight the power. But these are the same dudes that were still fighting to get their money for their masters, right? Right? If it was all about the message, if it was just all about that, then Else, then what you care who make the money off of it so long as it went out to the people, right? That's how they be trying to make it seem to us, right? No. Shukran, Baron. Thank you, bro. No. No. They put it on everybody else. They put it on the brokest people and tell them that it's bad for them to want to have something more, want to have some sort of success in life. According to all modern capitalism that we perceive it as through the colonial period is based on a treatise written by Adam Weishaupt under the name Adam Smith called The Wealth of Nations, volume 22. And when you read that, it basically says, like I come to agree with to a degree, is that all real nations essentially strive or thrive in and through capitalism. See, our perception of capitalism is based on what we perceive as exploitation. But that's not what it is. Your ancestors, the same ancestors that they trying to act like was broke and just was in trees in the jungle and shit. These are the ones that created the economic systems that we're dealing with today. So how could they be anti-so-called African? How can you be anti-so-called capitalist when your so-called African ancestors was the ones that created it? <laughs> Does that sound, that sounds crazy. You sound crazy. Who doesn't want to have a better life for themselves and their family? Name one person. And in any society, not just this one, in any society, when you're dealing with the interactions of people and moving that society forward, commerce is the way that people do it. By barter, by bartering, by trading, by, by deeming things value and then trading in those things. Because what that does is it creates the idea, it creates and propels creativity. Because somebody could see this person with this wagon and another person be on the wagon and be like, you know what, this wagon is cool, but I think I can make the wagon in a different way to make it even much more wagon than this wagon. Then this person makes a better wagon. And now everybody's supporting this person, but there's still people that like the old wagon, so they buy the old wagon. So look, you got two wagons, right? One that's old, one that's new, one that's a little better, but one that has nostalgia. 
So guess what? Both wagons have their customers, their niche market, their niche people that's going to support it. Why? Because that's how he do. That's called preference. And from there, another person might see it and say, you know, I ain't going to make a wagon. I'm going to make a flying car. Now we have flying cars, but that don't mean the wagon. Now that means that the wagons, now people stop using the wagons. That means now the wagons go up in value. So now you've created a whole creator market, a whole, excuse me, a whole collector's market now just for those wagons. How is that wrong? How is that bad? How is that anti-so-called black? How is that anti-so-called African? How is that anti-human? How is that exploiting somebody? It's not. These same niggas that talk about how you need to be anti that you basically need to be broken all this. These are the same niggas with bank accounts. These are the same people with podcasts. These are the same people paying their bills every week. <laughs> these ultra-revolutionaries and shit. You understand? It's a scam. It's a fake scam like everybody else. Like them peeing out this fake reality. Like I said, this dude Tucker put 65 million people out his basement, homie. His basement. CNN is over. Fox is over. People only want to hear news and, and stuff and whatever from other from other people that look like them, other humans. They don't want Main, they don't want that what's considered me no more. Because it's all rigged. It's all fake. So if it's all fake, then why am I even participating in that? Because in the end, you're doing this to manipulate me. Like you've been manipulating this reality all this time, but it don't matter now. Time is up. The lights is in the sky. <laughs> New York, they want to pay New Yorkers now to to house to house illegal immigrants in their crib. Don't do it because the minute that you let one of them in your crib like that, they're going to say that you agreed to allow them in there so you can't kick them out. And then within a year, these niggas will put in paperwork and they will take your house through that immigrant. Think I'm playing. These immigrants are criminals. They are letting their jails out. They're letting their sanitariums out. They're letting their rapists out. They're letting their child molesters out. Joe Biden, the DNC, the present United States corporate government is running the biggest human trafficking organizational free-for-all, fire sale in the history of the United States. Nobody has trafficked more children than Biden at this day. And I'm saying that they, that people, that sheriffs haven't said on the congressional floor, what are they doing about it? Nothing. Nothing. They're trying to figure out how to take money from us. So you have to understand this is beyond our position to fix. <laughs> okay? Accept it. We can't fix this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's over. Accept it. And if you can accept it, that means that we will rise above it. We will survive it. Why? Because this has reached a level that only our law can destroy this shit. Only this is so when you talk about having faith in God, faith in Allah, faith in Yeshua, faith in Buddha, whatever, whoever you call it. This is when you're supposed to have the most faith. But this is the time that is showing us that not only is it over, but it never really even started for them. This is all fake. This is, remember, this is still all fake. None of this is real. None of this really happened. None of the shit they say happened really happened, remember? Remember? So technically, this, we're in, 
Look at it like this. We're waiting for the apocalypse to start. What if you're already, what if we are, all of this time has been the apocalypse? We're in the post-apocalyptic world now. We're in it. This was it. When you were born, whatever year you were born, you were born into the post-apocalyptic world because the real world got wiped out prior to us getting here. Remember? The flood and all that shit? Now it already happened. Then, the Moorish era, the Tartarian era, whatever you want to call it, they wiped that out, right? That was wiped out. <laughs> then they, then they, they, in the 1800s, started going into all of the wild up buildings, burying everything, right? And then created this shit that we in now, right? That's less than 150 years ago. We've only been in this reality. Think about what I'm saying. We have only been in this part of the reality for the past 150 years. Out of that 150 years, your your elder, your eldest grandmother has been alive for 80 of those. So think about what I'm saying. When did it get started? When was it ever? <laughs> when was it? <laughs> when was it all good? What if it already happened? That's why I said, what if you think it's the fake reality, but what if the people are the fake reality? What if the what if they've just peopled this with so many false realities, i.e. false humans, i.e. human artificials, life model decoys, robotoids, skinwalkers, right? Let's say it's, a, let's say it's four billion what the, the, the lost found lesson said was four billion four hundred million, right? Let's say out of that four billion four hundred million, let's say one billion of those are not even real people. Think about that. That's what Iron Legend was about. He was still trying to save the, the vampiric people who were, who, were, who were beyond saving. This is Will Smith in the movie. He was about saving them. Even though he saw them eating each other, even though he saw them jump on top of each other and rip each other apart and all of that, he still so arrogant enough to think that he could save it. And what I'm trying to say is we are not in the position to save the reality. The reality is going to be saved by the one who created it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's arrogant to think that, okay, I'm going to go out here and vote, and that's going to put me in position to be able to, no, that's not how it works. What works is when people put themselves in the position to make something happen. And remember, if you remember anything I said, remember this. If organized evil will always overcome an undisciplined good. If organized evil will always overcome an undisciplined good. Not for long, but for a time. So ultimately, this thing is going to get fixed based upon the fact that it's so broken 
that it can no longer function in its primary capacity. And so they're going to fix it one way or the other. And it's all in the color scheme. I don't know if y'all saw this. Now, one thing we should know about mermaids, I'm showing this for a reason. Look at the colors in the mermaid, and then look at the colors of the planet taken above New York. Same colors, right? Yes. Now, the thing with mermaids is this. As much as we like them and all that, mermaids essentially are evil. <laughs> Why? I don't hate mermaids. However, because we don't know history, we always wind up subverting our own blessing. Subverting our own blessing. Back when, okay, how many people know the name of the serpent that got Eve in trouble? Everybody said it was Lucifer, but no, that wasn't his name. Does anybody know who the serpent, what the name of the serpent was? No, Lilith was actually, she was one of the females that was already alive at that time. We'll get to her in a second, but no. That angel's name was Gadriel. Gadriel. Okay. And Gadriel, in that story, he was the one that was trying to free up the angel. Because there's a book called The Apocalypse of Adam and Eve. And this gives an alternative view of the story, and it basically says that. The demiurge locked them in the petri dish that we call Eden. And he was trying to create a, a new subservient class by gassing them to think that they was perfect. And then within that, he could perpetually keep them there and then keep their energy going. So Gadriel was like, nah, that's whack. They should be free. And then basically told everybody, and that's when everything came to a head and they wanted to get kicked out. Okay. Now, at the time, there were already women there. What made Adam and Eve, like, people say, oh, there can never be two. To, there was never no one man, one woman. But think about it. If God was to go through your family tree right now, and we were to go all the way back to the very beginning of your family tree, what will we find? What will we find? We just went all the way back. We just kept tracing the generations back and back and back and back from you all the way back. What eventually would we get? So good. Yes, Dan. We would get a man and a woman. It would come down essentially to one man and one woman who at one point got together and they created the thing from that point on. Now, there were people that were already on earth prior to that, but they were not considered what we would consider a male or female. This is where we get into now the pray, what they call praetor humanity. These are the these are the, the pre-human pre adamites okay? These are the entities now. So according to the story, the boys fell, and once they fell into the earth, they couldn't go back up, so they decided to make this a heaven for themselves. So what they did was they went into the daughters of men. That's what the women at that time, they were essentially called. And from those daughters of men, they gave birth to the giants. And then the giants gave birth to the abominations. And then the abominations gave birth to the men of world, excuse me, the giants gave birth to the men of, of great renown. And then from the men of great renown, we get 
the abominations that's created from that. So after all of these generations, the successive waves of these different types of entities and these things that were being birthed that were almost so evil that they were, or we would perceive as evil, that they could not even touch the, the earth. Like they, they, they were so tall, so giant, they couldn't even eat. Like this, just causing havoc, eating people. Things was just messed up. So what happened? Blood came, wiped all these things out. Just like it never happened. You know? And then we are given dominion from that point. You understand? Because we were not made in the iniquity that was made by these other things. Because these things was created by disgruntled spirits. These so-called disembodied angels and shit that was not supposed to be making no people. They wasn't supposed to be making nothing. They're supposed to be serving us. They're supposed to be giving us messages. Not out here having sex with Lilith and doing all of this orgy shit and creating these, these donkey men and, and blemies and, and, you know what I'm saying, ogres and shit. Like, God ain't want none of that. The lion asked for all of that. And then these things are created. These things ain't got no soul. So if they die, where they gonna go? They can't go into the afterworld or the higher dimensions or the lower dimensions. So they got to stay and girdle this place right here and just become part of all of the messed up shit. What they call the, 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 uh, the festering. And so they just girdle back and forth, back and forth, not doing nothing, becoming idle, not having no bodies. But they still giants. They still immortal creatures. You know what I'm saying? So they become influence pillars and they start to get men to try to reincarnate them so they can come back in physical world and, and, and mess shit up. And so they start getting people, start urging people, reminding them that they can do blood sacrifices and orgies and all this type of shit. And that's what they start doing. Again, after all of that shit, need to start doing it again. What you think Allah is going to do? So remember, that shit happened. That's only 6,000 years ago. I can get into the math how that's how that's logically possible too. But we'll get into that next week. But essentially, they are real like in the year 5,998. <laughs> Basically. In that, in this cycle, you know what I'm saying? So it's pretty much a done deal. You got another two years before it really comes down to this thing. So that's why they're trying to turn it up even more. And so, like I said, what resulted in the in the in the quincux of all of that was that the, the descendants of those daughters of men, they these chicks was now cursed, and they were cursed to the bottoms of the depths. Never to see the sun, never to sing um the, the original songs of creation that the fallen angels had taught them, they could only now sing from the perspective of desire. And so they got banished to the waters. And then um, because they were zoomorphic, they were half human, like half female, half fish. They, they had to stay in both realms. They could be on land on a rock or some shit, but eventually they'd have to go back in the sea. But then they'd be in the sea after a while. They would start to go crazy. They got to go back on land. See? So the only way out would be to hopefully make bargains with these disincorporated spirits and shit by doing sacrifices. And this is where they would, they would do the siren songs with the dudes and the boats and the sailors and all of that shit, right? All that shit you've seen in Aquaman. Basically, this is where that came from. So this is where mommy wants it. So because these things believe and were taught that they could be gods of the earth, little G gods, so they then tricked men and women into believing that they themselves were then gods. This is where mommy wants it. And these types of Dagon... Right, and Poseidon, and these these niggas come from, and so they fool the people believing that they gods, but really they're just the the bastard abomination creations of these daughters of men that didn't have the original seed of Adam, right, of the original Adam that laid the groundwork for us, who was made in the image of the highest part of all this shit. So thus the mermaids got banished. And in that, and they were never supposed to be seen again. 
So thus, mermaids are evil, which is why Disney, you know what I'm saying, would, would love to just have all these types of remakes and shit and, and get people sucked up in there. Because when you read the original Little Mermaid story, like the real, the real story, it don't go like none of that. It's total opposite. Then, to add insult to injury, Disney always do shit like this. This is real. So, like, when it comes up in the joint and it says, like, coming soon and all of that, the letters, the first letters that come up is N I G A. <laughs> you see, she's riding on the octopus, right? Who is the octopus? That's Cthulhu. One of the elder gods, right? And look, he got the same colors that he got. Here. Yeah, so these niggas think these niggas ain't slick. They played her because she's a sock puppet, like every other celebrity, like every other major famous person. All of these people are there to support the agenda of the unholy trinity. So Baal is there to get the men to to uh prostrate themselves destroy the men ishtar is there for the destruction of the females turn them into hot girls and whores and holy virgins and sacred prostitutes according to crowd and then moloch is there just to eat everybody's children mutilate the children and all of that so they work in tandem so when you see the satanists make the sign of the cross that's who they're crossing to, not to Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That's how ill they are with their Christianity. Like they, that's why they call it Christianity. It's not, Christians are not evil. Christians are just as evil as Muslims. Muslims are just as evil as Hindus. Hindus are just as evil as Baptists, and so forth and so on. It has nothing to do with the individual. It has nothing to do with the even the religion. It's, it's the Freemason secret societies that are at the top that are really running these things as sex cults and and <laughs> and and, and uh, secret cabals to these secret deities that they worship. They don't care what it is. They don't care if it's this. They don't care if it's Muhammad, Yahushua. She, but they don't care. And what's most important, when I was talking about all of these, these extra dimensional entities and these wars that they was going through, a lot of these entities, like I said, they convinced humans that they themselves were gods. And then these gods started to take these humans and put them into wars against other people, proxy wars and shit. The same way we was taking the Caucasians and sicking them on one another, and then at the end, we would let the Caucasians have like little land reserves, and then we would take all of the spoils and all that. That's that where do you think we get that from? This is this is what it's been like on this planet. So they want to make they want us to believe that we see images of Horus with the with the, with the eagle head and, and this one with the centaur body and shit like that. Like all that's mythological. It's mythological in the context of it existing today. But that is all coming from the post or pre-flood world that we inherited and that we cleaned up and that we got so pristine that once we fell, we forgot the whole thing. And now they've given us back all of this stuff in the form of entertainment. When it's all basically telling us the same story that we already know. Yeah, they got a show. Yes, thank you, Mo. Yeah, they got a, a movie coming on um about the giants. Yes, I'm telling you, because they now they're getting into the giant phase now. You're gonna see all these movies with giants. Homie that did uh 
Boots, Boots Riley, he got one coming out about a little black boy who's a giant. They're doing a movie called uh, Young Leviathan, like, yeah, Teenage Leviathan, but she's a Leviathan. It's an animated show. She's a Leviathan. She got to stop the Kraken. She come from the race of Krakens. Like, what? <laughs> like, all of a sudden, like, what? It is what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to make Leviathan, Kraken. These these going to be household names. <laughs> what are you talking about? Everybody is is to be well versed in in paganism. You don't know? Look, here it is again. That's what the chemtrails, that's what the spraying in the air, that's what all this shit is about, man. To throw off our visual cortex so we don't see things for what they really are. We don't see reality for what it is. We see it for what we want it to be, what we remember it to be, what we hope it could be but rarely what it is. And that's a good thing because for some of us, we couldn't take it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some people would just check out like, nah. nah. Some people, you say it now, but imagine seeing Saturn take up nine tenths of the sky. Where like you're just going out to jog one morning and then Saturn is literally nine tenths of the sky. You know what I mean? People just drop dead. People just drop dead. Like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. And some of us should be like, yes. Finally. Right? So, you know what I mean? Some of us be like, damn, it's about time. Yes. Yes. That's what I'm saying. That's the difference. That's the perception of reality. That's why everybody's reality is subjective. It's based on your perception. How much of it can you really handle? That's, that's, like I said, the way Christians was talking when we was coming up, they supposed to be, oh, they supposed to be ready. They supposed to be singing every morning at the judgment day here. They supposed to be the main ones because it's for them. <laughs> it's all coming out, like Like there was this whole perception they was talking the other day about how the ancient times, the ancient times and stuff, people didn't um see the color blue. They felt like because they never wrote blue down or whatever, they didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like they never knew what blue was. And then one day everybody starts seeing blue. Shit, these people be coming up with, yo. Just, <laughs> just be saying, you know what I'm saying? They just be saying shit. It'd be like, yo, like, what? What are you talking about? Like, you didn't see blue. Like, what? Yeah, well, you know, they didn't see blue at one time because they, you know, nobody wrote the word blue down. And there was no blue. I was like, okay, so, so what did they see for blue? Oh, it's green. So they saw green as blue. So when blue came out, what did green look like? <laughs> it's like, oh, well. See what I'm saying? Like, they just, <laughs> they just say anything. They just be lying. Okay, so green is out now. Okay, now you know what blue is. What's this? So now that look like the same blue? They, they, don't, they don't see the green. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. They, they just be lying. It'll say anything now, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like, you cannot take this shit serious. Because nine times out of ten, it's not even real. It's like, it might be an AI now. It might, like, you can't believe nothing. Because these niggas, they'll say shit like, yeah, blue didn't exist at one time. It didn't. Then how come... The Yamasis was importing the red clay down to to the to the to the temple of the sun, and they was they was um making it blue and put on the blue parts of the paintings they was doing. And in some of them paintings, I remember seeing blue water in it. 
So what are you niggas talking about? Nothing. We just lying. We just lying. What we do? We lie. So to put a to, to put a, a a bow in that with the blue thing. So next time you're talking to one of these people talking about ancient Egyptians wasn't black or you know uh, black all blacks came as slaves from Africa. When you, when, when you come across one of those lunatics, <laughs> and you will, when you come across one of them lunatics, ask them, well, how come the ancient so-called Comedians, we need to start calling them Comedians too instead of Egyptians. Whatever. Kemet, you know, is different than Egypt. And these niggas think that, I guess, the Egyptians was white because Egypt is in Africa. You see? Just crazy. It's crazy. But who's causing the confusion? Freemasons. Who? Zachary Howes. Uh, 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 what you call it? Uh, OT. He's not OTO. He's, um, He's he's one of them Sun Temple Masons out there, one of them Helios temples out of Karnak or some shit, or a cartoon or one of them. them old Arab, one of them old pale Arab Masons. He he's the one causing the confusion today. So the next time they start talking all that crap, you can show them shit like this. He's like, well, wasn't Amun the hidden one, the oldest god of the whole pantheon? Wasn't he depicted in all blue? Yeah, yeah, he was. But remember, in order to make this blue dye that you've seen here, they had to use red clay from Georgia to do it. So this is what I'm saying. So yeah, so here he is as well. See him giving him the blue box. This is the Tesseract. Remember we was talking about... um. You watch Thor and all of that? Loki? That's the Tesseract that he handed him. And he's handed him, he's handed it to him in the blue face. Or I should say the blue face. Right? Now, the thing is, this blue, like I said, came from two places. One place, get it out. One place is the red dot and the red clay and all of that that they were getting from Georgia. The other place is from the sky itself. Sky. So I'll be listening to myself and this is shall be saying like wow this <laughs> you really wouldn't know what you're talking about me. <laughs> it'd be sounding crazy. Um This is the other place. And this is what the Tesseracts, the original Tesseracts they was making is what they was made out of. Now the Lion White Man calls this, he doesn't call it what it is, he calls it something else. He say it's basically plain excrement. He basically says, this is the excrement that when you go to the bathroom on a plane and you uh, flush the toilet, the plane ejects the excrement, and this is what it looks like. But he's a damn liar. He's a damn liar. Yeah, here we go. This is skystone. This is one of the rarest elements 
shall ever find or hear about that nobody talks about. The reason why they can't really talk about it is because it's very hard for them to use it. It's a geopolitical. And um, only, like they say, like the elders of Kilimanjaro, only certain clans know how to preserve it, to keep it. Because it only can really last. It's once you get a piece of it and you're chilling with it, after a while, it will just eventually disappear. Because it's actually made up of chip firmament. <laughs> as the story goes. And what it is, it's very heavy, right? Like if you drop it, it sounds like a rock, like a heavy rock. But when you pick it up, it's dumb light. It's crazy light. But like if you throw it in the air, they say it kind of like comes down a little slower. But when it, you, it goes in, it's, it can feel heavy. They've been experimenting on how to uh, preserve it even longer, but they don't really know how to do it because after a certain time, like I said, it just disintegrates. It, it disappears. It evaporates. Crazy, right? So allegedly, they got space up here. The water's above from the waters of the deep. So what they're doing allegedly is when they shoot rockets, you notice the rocket, there's never you've never seen a rocket go straight up like this. Never seen. Um, when you see the rockets, they go, they curve, right? They're curving through the sky. That's because, and then it gets to a point where it curves, and then you see it like it looks like it's scraping on something. That scraping, right, breaks off pieces of this that they then go and pick up spirit to whatever laboratory and try to test it up and do shit to it before it disappears. So it's really a task in futility, if you ask me. But they figure if they can blast past this, then they can get into the upper waters and then bring the war to Allah itself. But it'll never happen. I said they already lost. These are, I want to take a picture of this. This is out here in Florida. This is where I'm at. These are some of the etheric devices that they use to pull down the organ energy and stuff uh, to power a lot of this stuff that they got under Florida. A lot of the, you know, secret stuff. Now look at the top. Look at this shit. I think I'm playing Look at this at the top of uh, this the Delano. This one is like not too far from my crib. But look at the top. See the spacing in the device? Now look at Almond's headdress. See how it's the same shit? Keep it. Because they're trying to bring Florida is a whole different vibrational frequency than some place like <laughs> okay. They are in an entire like we're in a whole different frequency. Like the shit that was happening up in all of other states and all of that. We'll talk since before the pandemic started into now, in terms of our lives, like our lives down here, we wasn't affected by that shit. Like Floridian, they was doing something vibrationally. That shit was not, was not flying out here. It was not from off rip. They was like, nah. We're not, we not participating in none of this. 
And I think these, these are some of the reasons why they have these strategically placed. If you ever out here in Florida, look at the top of a lot of these skyscrapers. You're going to see a lot of pyramids. You're going to see a lot of these types of devices and shit like that. But they never stop using energy buildings as energy conductors. They never stop doing it. They never will. They just can't build any of the new ones to look like the old ones or function like that anymore. So they're basically just doing a lot of reverse engineering on shit. That's why everything is breaking down because they weren't the ones to build it in the first place. You understand? Oops, sorry. Um, this is another book you should get. People start talking to you about. I'm talking to you about the Moors, you know, like it's already a wrap in terms of like the, the, the discrepancy, the back and forth, who's Moors, who's not, like we've already, we've already illustrated the truth in that. Anybody still trying to debate, go back and forth with that, these are people that's just there to waste your time, man. Those people that is playing games with you and trying to keep you caught up in a in a asinine argument that has no basis in real fact anymore. And like I said, it's it's because of this, when these things are as these things happen, they have progressively moved us forward. Also, in terms of the who's black in Egypt and all that, Chank Anta Diop solidified that historically. That's why I, people like myself, I don't feel like we need to say really anything about any of that shit anymore because Diop set that shit back, all of them Egyptians back almost 100 years and let them know that they descend from the people who were castrating so-called Africans, people that look like us or whatever, Moors or whatever, and trying to create a whole unit class or whatever through that Arab slave trade shit. And they were the ones that was digging up our ancestors, you know what I'm saying, all the so-called black Egyptian ancestors, Tunisian ancestors, and selling them to white people to this day. Where they was eating them, um, making paste out of them, making paint out of them, most of Picasso paint. A lot of the old painters used to use what they call mummy brown as ground up melanated people that they put into these paintings. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, oh yeah. Show you this. Yeah, so the blue thing is, again, that's because that's a, going back to our Thing with the Tesseract and opening the different realities, that's basically what's been happening. And so we, again, as the, the first born second, we will now be the first. Because as it says, all our brothers, when our brothers from the East come, it's going to be a wrap. And thus it is. See, this is him passing the Tesseract ball. And then this right here, see this, this loop right here? The green loop. With the eye, right? This is a whole nother reality that they are now opening up and looking into through the, what they call the, the green door. You know, the Tesseract. Is blue. That's why this dude, this chick in, remember the movie Fifth Element? Remember this chick? Remember she had the blue stones in her, in her stomach? Right? And this chick is representing, or this dude is representing old so-called all uh, mind joint. But think about it. What? What? Leopards were the Siberian looking mines that they want to say is the ones that was there. What leopards was they wearing? 
Where were they getting leopard print from? But then you get from the pre, right? Thrown in the accuser, look. See what I'm saying? All of these stuff, because we're the aliens. We're the aliens, bro. We're, it's us. These are out, outer dimensional aspects of us. And when we was dressing and doing shit like this, this was us bringing our, our higher dimensional selves into this reality. And making our, our bodies mimic such. We are the blue people. We are the green people. Us, man. We're the aliens, bro. Let me show you, bro. How many of us? have children you just there to see your babies and stuff born right how many of y'all when y'all brought your baby home had this But if they're Mongolian spots, how come they show up on melanated people? The melanated people is African. How come they're not called African spots? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's the deal? <laughs> because this is evidence of what I'm saying, bro. Like, we are now reaching the level where we're going post consciousness. The wolf, the wolf mind virus that has done awaken the rest of humanity. That we are now, our, we, we, are a, we are more alien to this version of this earth <clears throat> than we are alien to one another. So, in the constant, in the constant understanding that that is, then that means, again, this blue dye, which represents the, the blue energy, which represents the same energy that comes from, let's say, the blue kachina, or what they call the red kachina, which is really a, another way of saying blue shift and red shift, right? This energy, this activating energy is within us. So we, have, so when you gave birth to your baby, per se, and then you've seen this on it, they call them melanin is possible, black people, my father is possible, whatever. This, again, is the covenant. This is what they would also call the God smack. This is what the Yakub nurses in them was trying to look for to kill in the baby. Because this is, again, direct descendants of that Amun or that Osiris, right? Amun being the hidden one. Osiris being the resurrector. So this, again, is the evidence of our immortality as people that we are now slowly waking up to, and while that's happening, all the dullards are being cast to the wayside. So it's the best time for us to declare nationality and do shit we need to do, because <clears throat> all we gotta do is make sure we wrap ourselves up within that blood of the lamb. The lamb, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> is 
you. That's basically it. Anybody have any questions? We went through all of them sons. Like, this shit is crazy. No matter where you was at on earth, just you seeing you seeing it. So I think the shit beyond the ice wall is what we prefer or refer to as space. And the space in between, the bleed in between going from that octave to the other is what we perceive as that. And then above all of us is this humongous firmament that we then quantifiably exist within. Right, that then dictates the reality without. And then we are the physical microcosms of that macrocosm within self. That then is perpetually thing. But to me, that makes more sense than us sitting on a ball, hurtling through space around the sun while other planets are going around us and going around the same sun and none of them is hitting each other. And then we got meteoroids and meteorites and and all types of other shit zipping, passing through, and then you got the boo coming through every 306,000 years. A lot of that shit, same cat, or just a story that was just ran together. And because we don't have the proper context for the whole story, we just taking the parts that we can deal with, which is really all we can do. in the end, none of it is our fault. We're doing the best we can. But we farther ahead than most. Like I said, it's all coming out. The veil, the more this happens, the more veil is listed. You can check this out. Instagram is a part of the mass pedophile network. And all of the the shit that we saw coming up when they were talking about Pizza Gate was fake and all of that, all of that is true. They was calling each other maps and using words like walnut sauce and walnuts and, and pizza and pizza parties and hot dogs. It's all in here. So look this up. The Wall Street Journal just did this. Just like the Wall Street Journal just dropped the whole shit about it as well. They, they starting to turn. They, they realize that the whole shit is over. So they starting to turn on mainstream media because nobody's listening to them. They listening to, to people like me. Which reminds me, I'm going to be on Sister Dr. Priya Kewitt's show on Tuesday. I have the thing posted. Check that out. Uh, yeah, man. So yeah, this is what's going on. They 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 all getting shouted out and they all get shut down. And the energy centers is open, opening up, and they don't have a means for us to be able for them to be able to exist in a reality like that. So essentially, if we was to kind of like ultra phase ourselves through that tesseract into the quasi-reality or the pseudo-reality where we exist on a higher level, it might look something like this. So through, because the tesseract is the pineal organ. All right? Really, it's the, the, uh, pina, where, uh, the colostrum, where the golden liquid falls, falls out at the base of the spine. So allegedly, we're supposed to open that up when this reality goes into bullshit, goes into its final phase. Shit gets hectic. See the giant wave coming. You view the tesseract within the pineal organ. You open that up, and you literally fold space back into it. Once you're in it, once you're in it, you then fold that reality over itself and go back to the origin, which would be something like this. 
But remember, ye are gods. We were the rightful inheritors of all of this before the angels and the watchers and the glory and the elder gods and all of the demons and, and all of the menageries and the abominations came and, and messed this place up. And then as we fell from higher dimensions into the lower, into the lower, into the lower, each one of these forms, each one of these beings took a different form until finally it settled on the physical form that we understand the devil to be today. Whether that be the grand cracker, the white cracker, the yellow cracker, don't matter. And then from there, uh, we then, in order to get back up, we had to realize who and what this thing really is to see it for what it is, past the body, past the eyes, into the soul, or the lack thereof. That's why a lot of these things don't have souls, because a lot of these people were incarnated through ritual means. See what I'm saying? Through satanic means. And thus they were there to just become a host body for one of those giant spirits that could not be contained anymore, but lusted for blood. And so they put that spirit, this giant that was 200,000 feet tall, and then put it in the body of a nigga like Hitler. <laughs> what you think was going to happen? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like what you think going to happen when you incarnate something that huge into something that small? And with that low level of spiritual awareness, what you think will happen? So now think of the opposite. Think about somebody that has so much love in their heart and so much good joy and power. How many good entities and good souls can inhabit that being? So yeah, the goal is boom. We go through all of that and we pass through this essence and then we wind up into this fourth dimensional space. It's like fourth dimension. And then we're able to see the earth from the position of what it really is. It's another fucking quark. See what I'm saying? To then open a portal and go somewhere else. Word, sound, power. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. And the life. When he said that, he was talking about the ages of going into the inner temple of Solomon. The first part, the first entrance part was called the way. The middle part before you got to the main temple was called the truth. Then the life was the holy of holies. That was all the way in the back of the temple behind the great veil where they would keep the presence of the most high at. And that is life. So the temple of Solomon in which the Holy of Holies was kept, this is it. It's you. Did aliens build the pyramids? Yes, it was us. But it wasn't us in this form that we're in now. It was us in our pre-life form. So all the shit that's happening, it's got to happen. But let it happen, and while it's happening, create a, a paradise, an oasis for you in the meantime, so when it does switch over, we know what to do. So the best way to do that, again, is to place whatever assets that are there within a holy crypt, i.e. the trust, which again is a tesseract, right, time capsule that allows you to move this shit into the future regards to what is happening in the fictitious reality. The structure of it is what allows it to exist based upon the intent, how you set it up. So if it's not directly in your name, per se, then that means you control it. Because your name is holy. And according to Ram Emanuel and all of these proclamations we got here, we are the indigenous aboriginal people. We are the Native Americans. We are the original Hispanics. And we are the original everything. So... That's it. Anybody have any questions? Uh, I'll post it on my Facebook. Uh, I believe it's Dr. Pruitt. P-R-U-I-T-T. -T, Dr. Kia Pruitt. He's going to be on her show Tuesday. But I have a flyer on my Facebook page for you to see. Anybody have any other questions? See, yeah, see if you can get that book. Secret Cipher of the UFO Knots. Very good reading. I think you guys would like it. Um, there was one more joint for me to give you guys before we close out. 
Yeah, so that shit that happened in New York, there's no fires going on in Alberta, Canada. That shit is fake. Um, they, um, yeah, they, they just doing this shit to hide the fact that the sons and the peoples and, the, you know what I mean, the people we need or whatever, we here. They're here now. So there's no way for them to hide, no way for them to put shit. So they're going to, you know, make people distracted with other stuff. Peace. Just, you can uh, hit me up. Anybody wants to hit me up about this or anything else, you can hit me up at House of Bell at Hotmail.com. Of course. Um, Definitely hit me up there. One more moment. I'm trying to just give me one second. I'm going to pull it up for you guys before we go. Anybody have any other questions? Do I have any other questions? No. Oh. Real quick. Here it is. See if you can get this book. Very good for the more haters specifically. I was reading the other day. It's real good. Uh, with the, uh, I mean, you know, people going to worship who they worship. The Orishas, again, they were just Moors who became gods. In my, this is my opinion, all right? These are Moors, ancient Moors, ancient Asiatic Moors, right? Who eventually left the reality, became gods, gave their energy back to the people. Who they convinced they were gods. And they were able to keep presence in this reality by girdling and going through and taking over people like Beyonce and people, whoever, who want to worship them and want to keep them in power. And so they believe that they are gods, but they're little G gods. They're not God. Olodumare is, is a god, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a high being, very powerful. You know what I'm saying? But in essence, it's still just a, a lowercase g God, and it's still not higher than us. We were made higher than everything and everybody. Nobody is supposed to be higher than us. Not because I say so, because the true and living decreed that, and it caused a war <laughs> that these niggas still fighting. So, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Like, you got to just understand your position in it. You always going to be the most hated because everybody was upset at our station. And look, it's the same thing happening today. How many people hate us just for just existing? Because ultimately, this is us. We exist in this, in the whirlwind. In the true reality that can never not exist. You understand? So they don't know how to deal with that. So again, you know, think about that next time these niggas start talking to you, telling you how you're not Moors and you're not this, and you ain't that, and Moors ain't whatever, yo. Whatever y'all niggas got to tell yourself is what y'all tell yourself. But in reality, the true reality that we exist in. It's no bearing. And y'all niggas have no idea of what it really is. When they when you watch that TV show and it talked about the every everything always all at once, like that's the reality that we're in. 
That's what it is. This is what it is. This is reality. You understand? This is what we're really in. This is why we can't perceive it. You can't perceive this. So they give you glimpses. Our ancestors gave us this. In the simplest form for us to understand, in the very strand and coil of our hair. You want to tell me that there's no all this, this, there's no supreme being, there's nothing I no, it's us. That's what they don't want us to know. It's us. We are our own ancestors returned. We are the original people of every place that has an origin. Only heaven, hell, and, and earth that we experience is that which goes through our central nervous system, which again is the slave ship. <laughs> we went through that already. So, the more despair you feel over modern events, the way that you combat that is by doing what you know you need to do to move forward in your life. Watch what happens. Lost to what those events is happening out there, it's not going to throw you off what you're doing. Stop casting pearls to swine, and when something happens, we automatically turn to fear. Fear is not the end. So, so yeah, if you can get these these books, like I said, pretty good reads. Here they go. So yeah, thank you guys for the thirty dollars to visitors at gmail.com via PayPal or check out the DS418 via Cash App. Please check out www.cornoborganics.com. Definitely check out um uh please uh subscribe and support the notification for my YouTube page as well as my Rumble. I should have something new posted soon. Um, again, look out soon. I'm gonna have this app, and, and uh, we're gonna go upstairs with it. And uh, um, it's really look like this animation thing and show off can happen. So we keep y'all posted on that. But yeah, once we get the app up, then a lot of things gonna be moving. So you'll be able to contact me directly, and we can set up things from there, readings, and all that type of stuff, as well as like stuff that I can't post, you know, in case of joint. So. Again, man, thank you guys for coming through with that. If you haven't, please do. And uh, if you need anything else, hit me up at houseofl.com. And uh, please be safe out there. Stay vigilant. You know what I'm saying? And uh, let's do it. My Facebook page is Asir Ali Cordoba. You wouldn't let me put it in my real name. So I had to do a derivative of myself. So, um, yeah, guys, definitely check these joints out. Definitely the secret cycle joint that gets into what's happening right now in New York and all the fake shit that's happening as well as New Google. And the fact that we are merging into our original dimension. So let's prepare, let's get right, and let's start to create things that would help our people assimilate into this higher reality by getting right ourselves. So if you want to do and build more on that, hit me up, House of L, All right? Peace, more. Facebook is maxed out. Thanks. Thank you, y'all. Thanks for coming.